Well, I just thought we needed something to get us out and, you know, exploring. After all, we are in your explorer. Charlie says with a shit-eating grin on his face. You really brought this up to make a corny-ass joke like that? Dude, I was with you. But now I kind of want to say no just out of spite. Mike grumbles as he shifts his eyes towards you, hinting that he wants to know what you think. I mean, it'd be kind of a cool way to spend the weekend, you know? Searching old buildings for some kind of paranormal baddie. You say, looking at the both of them, doing your best to hold in your laughter. Pause. What the hell do you think ghost hunting entails, man? Now I'm considering retracting the idea. Charlie says as he looks at you with a what-the-fuck look on his face. Ah, uh, come on. I was just dicking around. I think it would be fun, though, to get a little scared going through quiet old buildings. Maybe we'll actually see something. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it'd be pretty cool. Even if we don't see anything, it would be a cool experience. Fuck it. Let's do it. Mike says, pulling out of the parking spot to hop on the road. Okay, let's go grab our camping gear because I want to at least be a little comfortable if I'm going to be shitting my pants. Mike says, turning off the road to head to your guys' apartment. You and Charlie laugh as you hop out of the car to grab your things. It only takes a couple hours driving down from Washington into Oregon. Uh, the sun had just started to set and the realization of what you guys are about to do sets in. You feel the nerves ball up in your stomach as Mike parks the rig about a mile away from Fort Stevens. At least that's what the GPS on your phone says. You, Mike, and Charlie make your trek towards the fort when you come to the gates that lead into the facility. Okay, um, not to sound like a bitch, but I am legit scared to go in here. Mike says, looking back at you and Charlie. His fear has become palpable now that he's said that. Yeah, I get that, man, but it's, it's too late to turn back now. Charlie says, pushing the gates open with a weird levity to his voice. What? We can literally turn back and go back to the car. What are you talking about? You say with a bit of force in your voice. Maybe the fear is getting to you, too. No, I mean, we've already come this far. May as well see it to the end. Come on, man, there's three of us. We'll be fine. Charlie says, putting a hand on your shoulder. His calmness starts to set your mind at ease. You three head into Fort Stevens. You meander among the concrete walls, ribbing each other and giving each other a hard time as you laugh and wander the halls. I really don't know uh, what was wrong with me when we got here. This is actually really fun. You say to Charlie as you skip down the hall a couple of steps. When you look back, Charlie's gone. Um, Mike, where, where's Charlie? The shudder in your voice is audible. I don't know. Maybe the ghost got him. Mike raises his arms as if to pantomime a ghost. Over here! You hear a voice like Charlie's in the room back behind you guys a few rooms away. You and Mike investigate and slowly shine your flashlight into the room and see Charlie with his back to you guys in the corner. Ch uh, Charlie? Your voice cracks and shakes in fear. He turns around as he zips up his pants. What? I have to take a piss. Why did you call us over here then? You state quizzically. I... I didn't. Charlie shoots back. Okay, we're done. Mike turns around and starts heading back. <laughs> yeah, probably a good move. There isn't a whole lot going on here and I'm kind of sleepy. Charlie says following. You three climb into your tent and snuggle into your sleeping bags, chatting for a little. As Mike turns off the lamp and you start to nod off, your comfort is broken by faint gravel crunching in the distance. Okay, the fuck is that? Charlie says, shooting up. Could it be a bear or a deer, Mike says? I mean, it could be. You say as you strain your ears to listen. The crunching gets louder and louder until it's maybe 75 feet from your tent. Dude, those are boots. Who the fuck is out here? You whisper to the others. You three stay up for the next couple of hours, hearing this person pace around your tent like a predator stalking its prey, when you finally pass out due to exhaustion. You and Mike wake up after Charlie, who has already got everything but your stuff in the tent in the car. You, you good, man? You say as you notice the boot pit prints around the tent. Yo, what the hell? 
Who wears boots like this? The prince looked angled. Not like two separate pin prints, but like one giant boot that curves at around 60 degrees, you think. You and the guys finish packing up and take off down the dirt path. As you look back, you see a man standing on the road. He looks inhuman, almost giant. You look forward to express to your guys that there's something back there, but as you look back, he's gone. So you want to find out a little bit about Fort Stevens, do you? You want to find out that it was a historic monument to the Civil War and preventing English infantrymen from coming and assisting the Confederates and bolstering their ranks during the times that the Union was being pressed up against the West Coast? Well, I'm glad you do. So if any of this sounds interesting, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and sit back, relax, buckle up in your certified seatbelt, because that's how it is nowadays for some reason, and enjoy as we go over the history of F Fort Stevens and the hauntings that took place after everything had gone down. One of the three major forts designed to protect the Oregon's Columbia River, Fort Stevens was constructed on the Oregon side of the river's mouth. The three forts, Fort Stevens, Fort Columbia, and Fort Canby, were authorized by an act of Congress in February 1862 to provide defense for Oregon and Washington at or near the mouth of the Columbia River. While the original purpose was to protect the river from Confederate commerce raiders such as the CSS Alabama from coming over and just kind of, you know, essentially cutting right through, uh, the Civil War was actually over before Fort Stevens was fully operational. Fort Stevens was named for the former governor and congressional delegate of Washington ter Territory, Isaac I. Stevens, who was killed in 1862 at the Battle of Chantilly. Stevens had been a very popular figure in the Pacific Northwest, and the naming of the fort was a fitting tribute to him. After the Civil War, Congress reduced the military's budget. At Fort Stevens, this meant, you know, funding maintenance, construction, small resident military forces. Um, were just cut. They were slashed. They didn't They didn't have the money to kind of prop them up. So they were like, eh, this is a dirt fort. We're not really going to help maintain it. So figure that out, guy. In 1884 to 1898, the Army Corps of Engineers took over Fort Stevens to use it as a base of improving the Columbia River Channel. It wasn't until 1896 that the U.S. Army began to expand and modernize the equipment and structure of the buildings in the fort itself. Uh, what this meant was, you know, um, instead of having dirt, clay kind of walls, they were instead replaced with concrete walls to kind of better protect the inside, the, the you know, the infantry, the people, the soldiers inside, the guns, to better just keep them safe. They did all of this in a means to make it a good coastal defense installation. The last concrete gun that was um, installed is the Battery Russell, and that was completed in 1904. Fort Stevens saw no combat during the Civil War, as it wasn't done being uh, installed, and it didn't see any combat in World War I either, even though that was, you know, obviously the Great War. But we had no one trying to come over to the uh, west side of the United States to try to infiltrate or do anything back then. Despite several submarine attacks at the mouth of the Columbia River in December 1941, Fort Stevens guns remained silent. Twice the Japanese submarine I-25 attacked oil tankers at or near the mouth of the Columbia River, damaging the tanker SS Connecticut by torpedoing the empty oiler. The most significant event in the fort's history took place on the night of June 21st, 1942, when the I-25, under the command of Commander Tagami, opened fire on Fort Stevens with its 5.5mm deck gun. 17 shells landed on the military reservation without causing any significant damage. And once more, the fort's guns remained silent. The commander of the fort had ordered the lights to be killed and no guns to be fired in return to the uh, the barraging submarine. This honestly paid off because the submarine, after shooting off these 17 shells, ceased fire because they couldn't make out anybody. They couldn't see anybody because of the lights being shut off and there was no muzzle flash from cannons returning fire. So at this point, it just ended up wasting the Japanese's time and they ended up leaving. 
The significance of Fort Stevens being shelled that night, though, was that it was the only uh, military installation that had been fired upon by enemy forces at all since the War of 1812. A stone monument of the Battery Russells actually commemorating the event down there. After its decommissioning in 1947, Fort Stevens is now one of the most popular units of the Oregon State Parks and Recreation Department and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Preserved on the grounds of the fort are a museum and reconstructed earth ramparts of the Civil War fort. So basically they just kind of erected the, the way it looked back during the Civil War, so like the dirt mounds and stuff like that. Um, it's home to a campground and beaches that kind of surround the fort itself and people are able to go there year round. You're able to go camp, do whatever you want year round. Now that I've got you all caught up on the history of Fort Stevens, I think it's about time I go over some of the hauntings that happened around or at the fort itself. Even though no casualties were ever recorded at Fort Stevens, hikers and other tourists have reported that there's ghost activity and other unexplained events going on in in or around the fort. Some paranormal experts believe that a person's spirit isn't always tethered to the exact place where they died. Sometimes these spirits end up clinging to spots that had great importance to them. One group of campers stopped to pitch their tents near the fort one summer evening. Even before night fell, members of the group reported to not really feel great, started feeling uneasy, a little antsy, a little paranoid, if you will. As if someone or something were watching them. Deciding to ignore their gut feelings, the group finished setting up their campground, made some food, and crawled into their tents for the night. That night ended up being a very long and restless night. Just as they were beginning to fall asleep and kind of get all comfy cozy, the sound of gravel crunching under boots surrounded their tent. One of the campers reports that there was an inexplicable, eerie feeling as if all the hairs on their back and their neck were standing on end. Unsure of what to do, the group just stayed quiet. They didn't want to make a noise, they didn't want to freak this thing out, whatever it was, they did not want to startle it. As they sit there in silence, they all they hear is the sounds of boot crunching gravel back and forth, back and forth, all around their tent. After a bit of time, whoever it was left, and the terrified group of campers passed out, and they woke up the next morning, they decided to go and investigate what was making that noise, they looked around their tents to check for boot prints in the dirt. Uh, the ones they found were unlike any they had ever seen before. They were completely freaked out. They decided to skip hiking that day and just decided to pack up and get the F out of there. They got to their car safely, but just as they were driving away, one of them looked back to see the figure of a tall man dressed in World War II kind of military attire watching them. As they were driving, the person continued to grow smaller and smaller in the rear view until, when they looked back, he was just gone. Disappeared. Another person uh, had reported that they were walking on the shore not far from Fort Stevens in the early evening. It was kind of chilly out, so the beach was... They kind of had the beach to themselves, really. Uh, he walked along. He could see the figure of a man approaching. The man appeared to be wearing clothing of like a deep kind of the army fatigue color. The man remembers that he carried himself in kind of a rigid, regal manner. So kind of like, you know, kind of had an air of superiority about himself. The two men got close to one another. They just kind of, you know, nodded, waved, you know, just kind of that thing dudes do where you just kind of look up, catch each other's eyes and just go. Just kind of like that. That makes sense. After he passed, he looked back and the man was gone. Thoroughly confused, he glanced up and down the beach trying to figure out where where this guy went. Who, who, who was he? Where was he? There's no way he could have just disappeared from the beach. He didn't hear him pick up pace. He was walking the same pace he was when he noticed him, and he's just gone. The man ran up and down the beach to see if he could find this man. He went inside the hotels that were around the area to see if they had any kind of guy dressed in army fatigues, but... Didn't get an answer. Nobody knew what he was talking about. Nobody saw a man like this. So basically they looked at him and they're like, dude, you are, you're losing it, buddy. Do we need to call the, uh, the mental hospital? Have you, have you, you know, have your little brain checked out there, feller? 
He went back to his hotel, where he remembered seeing a book dedicated to soldiers who manned the base during the bombardment of Fort Stevens. Frantically, he flipped through the black and white photographs, and there he found it. He saw a man looking back at him, dressed in the exact same army fatigues. The man couldn't believe his eyes. But it was definitely the same man. Not a picture of a guy that looked like him. It was the same exact man. Exactly the same age as he was that he saw him on the beach in this photo. It seems that the long dead commander just wanted a quick little walk on the beach. The other soldiers don't appear quite as uh, conspicuously. There have been many hikers and many other people reporting that they have seen glowing orbs around Fort Stevens, along the beach, in the area surrounding the fort at any times of the day. Particularly more at night, which is obviously, but they've seen it in the early morning, the later afternoons. They have seen these glowing orbs just kind of floating listlessly through the air. Uh, paranormal enthusiasts believe that these are the souls of soldiers who defended Fort Stevens appearing in their, you know, most purest soul-like form. Some visitors claim to see on some nights when the moon is full that there are just as many of these spirit orbs as there are stars in the sky, which if that were me, I don't know if I'd be freaked out or if I'd be like, oh, that's cool. I need to get a picture of it or a video of it. I'm, I'm not... I'm not sure. I'm not going to go on and on and on about me being a skeptic because by this point, you guys should know that I'm a skeptic on this. And if I don't see it, I'm very hesitant to be like, that's proof. But who knows? Fort Stevens was a an incredible piece of the United States history, and it stands today as a relic of the past, but also a monument to just the, the steadfast... The, basically the will of the West, if we want to go there, because it has stood the test of time. It has eaten military shells and spat them out like they were nothing. He eats nails for breakfast without any milk kind of thing, you know? And it's just very cool to hear that a piece of history like this is continued to go on throughout history, and even the souls of the dead are like, that's pretty cool. I want to go check it out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on the history and the hauntings of Fort Stevens. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment letting me know if there's something else you'd want to see or another kind of haunted location in any of the United States, even if it's the UK, not the United States, you know what I mean. In the United States, in the UK, anywhere around the world, I would love to in investigate it, take a look at it, find out some cool history about it, and, and do a deep dive. I love doing these videos, they're really cool to me, and I really hope that you guys enjoy watching them. I, I really hope you get something out of them. So, again, do all the things down below that YouTube wants you to do to show that my videos are good and they deserve to get views and eyeballs on them. And I will see you guys in the next Haunted Breakdown.